So you join me in my garage messing with electrics. So a little bit of a strange one today, um, but something I have been experimenting, which is why the wires are not particularly neat right now, um, but sharing the output of my solar panel on the roof between two solar charges. Um, so the solar charger you can see behind me there and my Dabson power pack as well. So let's talk about the theory behind it, why I would want to do it this way, um, and the practicalities of what's actually happening and, and how it works in day to day. Um, it's been set up this way for around about two months now. Uh, and obviously as the sun's been getting um, a little bit stronger and we've seen a little bit more of it, shall we say, it's not been out all the time, um, but I've been able to get more of an idea of how it's been working and obviously make this video to let you know whether it's something you consider to be worthwhile or not. Um, and what I'm doing today is I'm installing this little relay as an added little sort of extra benefit, if you like. Um, and the relay is simply going to disable or enable the solar connection to the Dabson remotely via a little remote control. Because, um, yeah, I love little remote controls and that. And obviously everything's underneath my bed, so I don't want to go around disconnecting cables, which is what you can see with this one here. Disconnecting, reconnecting kind of thing, just to kind of properly test it. It's a pain, so I want to remotely kind of, yeah, connect and disconnect um, the solar from the roof so that I can either just have it go into that, which is my Renergy solar charger, um, or to both of them. And in effect, what I'm going to do is choose to charge my habitation battery first, that one there, um, using the Renergy charger, uh, in which case I would disable the relay so that all the solar charge is going through that charger and that battery. Um, and then when that is at 100%, um, I will then control the relay to switch it on to then pass the solar through to that device using the secondary cable that you can see there. So I'll explain a little bit more in detail in a minute and draw a little diagram for you folks. Um, but for now, I just want to get this relay installed. And um, yeah, all it is essentially is going to do is um, allow the positive cable to connect or not connect um, on the way to the Dabson for the solar input, which will mean that it will either have a solar input or it won't. And if it doesn't have a solar input on the Dabson, then all the power goes to this Renergy. And then once the Renergy, like I say, has charged that, then I'll enable the relay so that the Dabson and the Renergy can share the solar. Anyway, I'll explain it in a minute. Let's get on with this first. All right, so the relay is now installed in situ. And as we can see from the front of the Dabson, there are no watts going in there, but on the front of there, obviously we've got 130 odd watts, 140 watts. So that's okay. So if we now switch this on, you've heard the relay go on. That's dropping down and that is now going up. So the solar is now going into the Dabson. Now if I click the relay off, you heard it click off and that's dropping down to zero and then back on again. And that should then click in and then the watts should pour in. There we go. And that's estimating the recharge time underneath it. That was watts. Simple relay. That, if anyone wants to know, um, you could use as a, um, you know, a security device for your vehicle. Install it anywhere. Just carry this with you. And um, you could disable the starting um, of your vehicle that way. Connect it to your starter motor or just connect it to your vehicle battery. Um, or you could isolate your leisure battery with it as well remotely. So your leisure system can be instantly disabled um, to a limit of 200 amps. I'll link it in the video description down below. But yeah, cool little device. Uh, and it literally is just a 200 amp um, switch just with a nice little remote control. So with that remote relay, you do get two remote controls and also this sort of like battery connector with all the lugs and some, you know, sort of like interconnectors and things like that. Um, because like I say, it is designed to isolate a battery. So you would connect it to a battery terminal. 
so you could isolate the battery easily via the remote control. However, I'm just using it to isolate the solar input. And the power for this relay is coming from my Habitation 12 volt system. So it's got a little five amp fuse on it down there, the bottom one. And um, because it doesn't need anything other than power to uh, essentially um, enable the relay. That's all it needs, a tiny little bit of power just to enable the relay. And then the relay has got the ability to handle the high amp um, sort of throughput. Right, now let's go and explain what I've done, how I've done it and how it works in practice. So whilst this looks messy, like I say, I'm still messing with it all at the moment. So this little connector here, through this cable here, goes to the input of my Dabson for charging. Um, so solar charging and also DC to DC charging. And then this little connector here comes out of the back of my DC to DC charger that I've set at its maximum, which is about 27 volts, which manages to produce just over 660-ish watts. So my Dabson actually sees it as solar input. So during the winter, I connect this bad boy up there, and every time I start my engine, I can get um, a direct DC to DC charge into my Dabson. However, I've noticed that solar's getting pretty decent right now, so I wanted to utilize it as much as I can. So essentially my solar comes in, comes into this, and then essentially I've just looped out from that into this connector. So you can see there, that's the negative going to this connector. And now via this little remote relay is the positive switched and then goes that way. So solar comes in from the roof into this charger, which then charges my HAB battery to 100%. And then after that, the solar output goes to that. That's what it was supposed to be doing in theory anyway. What I actually found is this would take it for a couple of minutes and then it would reduce. That would take over for a couple of minutes and then reduce. And then it's all right on a really sunny day because eventually, you know, these two batteries get fully charged. But what I wanted to do was give myself the opportunity to switch off the Dabson sort of connection to it to allow this to fully charge my habitation battery. And then once that's fully charged, I can then remotely switch this on, which will then mean that solar is still coming into here primarily, but whatever it doesn't need now to charge my battery, so just keeping it topped up, it's probably just a, you know, a few watts, the remainder goes back out through the cable and over to the Dabson. So the Dabson then gets fully charged. So here's a view of my Renergy system. This is my little Renergy One screen. I'm going to enable the relay. So we'll see the 236 watts that it was getting in there to charge my Renergy habitation battery. Um, and then you'll see that this is then getting um, about 100 watts. And this is what sort of I was trying to describe before about the fluctuation between. You see how that's dropping. I've not switched it off. They're, they're both sharing the same solar input right now. But you'll see it fluctuate. So what happens is one of the chargers will take most of the input for a few seconds or a few minutes and then the other one will take most of the input for the same amount of time and they'll just share it between the two. Um, so it does take longer for them both to get charged but ultimately they're both taking this little trickle charge and it's both working fine. And like I say, they're both getting enough that they'll get charged with um, an average amount of sun during the day. So it actually works really well. Right, excuse me, but I live in a van. I've managed to get some Sharpies and I've actually got that, which is um, essentially um, the letters that make up my adventure thingy up there. So anyway, right, so I've got the back of this and I've drawn my nice little diagram because I know you guys like a diagram. So let's run through how this new system is set up. So solar panel has an output of plus or minus, which goes into the input of my original Renergy solar charger. So that's not changed. The output of my original Renergy charger goes to my habitation battery. My habitation battery obviously is connected to the fuse box and the fuse box powers the relay. So this is the new bit that I've added. So the solar panels connection goes to the input of the Renergy charger. On these terminals here, so essentially connecting with the input of the solar panel, um, I've got the negative, 
which goes straight to the negative of the power station. And then the positive goes to the switched side of my remote relay. The relay takes its charge from the habitation fuse box. So the relay always has power. And then when I want to enable the relay, as in to close the circuit there, essentially the solar charge will now come through here, through the relay and into the power station. So the way this is set up means that my solar panel with its solar charger will charge my habitation battery either on its own or shared via the relay to my power station. So I've now described the way that it actually connects. Um, how does it work in practice? Well, what I can do is if this battery is really low, um, I can have the relay off. So open circuit like it is at the moment. So the solar panel comes into the Renergy solar charger, which goes and charges the habitation battery. Um, and then once that's full or whenever I want, I can then choose to uh, close this relay. So enable the circuit. Um, and then what happens is the solar panel delivers its charge here. And then the solar charger in this side and the solar charger in this side then take turns in taking power. So you'd think, well, if there's 300 watts coming in, do they have 150 each? And they don't. If there's 300 watts coming in, that'll take 300 watts and then maybe for around about a minute. And then this will take 300 watts for maybe around about a minute and they alternate. So it's quite strange, but it works. Uh, the other way around it is um, that this will charge via this and then this say gets to 100%. This charge then knows that there's no more power needed for this battery. So it doesn't bother taking any power from the solar panel, in which case this can absorb all the solar panels power. Um, and that's basically how it works. So what I've noticed is whichever reaches full power, so of 100% state of charge first, stops taking the charge and then all the output from the solar panel is then delivered to the other battery. Now, obviously I can have um, this switched off so I can make sure that this always charges my habitation battery first. Once that's at 100%, I can then switch the relay on. And then because it's at 100%, this charger says, well, I don't need anything from you, Mr. Solar Panel. And uh, the solar charge just goes straight into the power station. And the sun is actually out a little bit more um, I can confirm this usually has both power stations charged by midday, even on average weather. That's how it works. Uh, that's how I've made it work. Um, and ultimately my single 600 watt solar panel on the roof um, has the ability now to charge both my habitation battery and my power station uh, simultaneously throughout the day. Um, and that's pretty much what I do. I know that if my hab battery is quite low, I can disable the dual charging, uh, but ultimately I just leave it enabled. So it's early April at the moment, weather's not so great, but it does have a tendency to be brighter than usual um, with a little bit of sun every now and again poking its way through the nasty clouds. So what I'm finding with the dual charging enabled pretty much all the time um, is that both batteries are fully charged worst case scenario by lunchtime if not sort of earlier in the morning um, and then they're both on trickle charge if you like sort of top up charge throughout the day and um, and yeah it's working a treat and not noticed any problems with anything like i said i've been doing this for several months now so i know it's not a common setup what i've got at the moment with a power station and uh, a sort of an electrical system you know on its own but if you do, then at least you know now that one panel can indeed supply power to two chargers. Um, and whilst the chargers won't take the full power of the solar panel um, at the same time, um, the way they share it is, um, yeah, it's perfectly okay. It works out fine. So thanks for watching. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up. And um, yeah, if I ever come across anything strange, I'll update you. Um, but for now, it all works okay. So yeah, happy days. Take care, folks. See you soon. Bye.